how we can find equivalent fractions using our multiplication chart. And simply all it is is locating your numerator and your denominator on that multiplication chart, whether you look on the top or look on the side, and then just finding the partners that work together. So I know that there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on. So if we just were working about with the fraction three fifths. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. And I did the same for fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25, 30, 35. All I'm doing is I'm basically finding the partners that work together. 3 and 5, well, 3 fifths, we already knew that one. 6 tenths, they're working together to make an equivalent fraction. Sure. Yes, Madison. Okay. Why don't you go grab your book one then? And then I would, do you have both in your desk? No, it's just me Okay. Anyway, um, keep in mind that each of these fractions are equivalent or equal to each other. They're talking about the same value, just a little bit different. Okay. We're going to talk about one other way to make equivalent fractions today, and that is cutting up or breaking apart a fraction bar. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of think time. Who can tell me what fraction is represented by my fraction bar? What fraction is represented by my fraction bar? Come on, guys. Every, every hand should be up for this. Abby? One-third. Very nice. So, and I should have said which fraction is represented by the shaded part. I, I didn't do my job perfect, but, but good. One part is shaded, and there's three parts in all. What if I did this. Took each of my parts, cut them in half. What's, what fraction is now represented by my colored section? Or sections. Riley. Two six. Two six. Ooh, excellent, Riley. Nice job. Now, did you guys notice, did Mr. Adamson just magically add more to his, uh, to his candy bar? Can I just disturb it? Yep, I'm just going to pause one okay. second. I'm sorry. Oh.